present some uh, results that, uh, like, uh, of the research that we conducted over the last few years. And in this research, we were looking at whether we could increase openness to contact after intergroup conflicts uh, by using the more exemplars approach. So, uh, as we all know, intergroup contact has been shown to uh, help uh, improve complicated and tense intergroup relations. Uh, specifically, uh, contact between groups with a history of violence has been observed to facilitate perspective thinking, increase intergroup trust, and improve mutual attitudes. Uh, among perpetrators, good quality contact with members of the victim group is associated with increased readiness to acknowledge in group responsibility for harm inflicted in the past. Whereas among victims, good quality contact with individuals from the perpetrator group is associated with greater willingness and readiness to forgive. Therefore, it seems that contact is crucial in promoting peaceful and positive intergroup relations after the conflict. However, in many post-conflict contexts, contact is very rare or even non-existent. And the question is what we can do in order to encourage people to engage in this kind of contact. Uh, so in our research, we decided to look whether more exemplars approach could be used in order to encourage people to engage in intergroup contact. Uh, more exemplars approach is based on the suggestion that in order to make a a reconciliation, reconciliation possible, we must trans transform mutual exclusive narratives about the conflict into more inclusive ones that can be accepted by both perpetrators and victims. And we believe that by talking about moral uh, individuals from the perpetrator group, we're creating this kind of more inclusive narratives. So who are more exemplars? These are members of the perpetrator group who acted morally and in opposition to the passive or active aggression of the majority. So these are people who risk their lives in order to save others in the time of intergroup conflict. And we have plenty of examples of such people uh, in different historical contexts. So in previous research, we generally uh, observed that uh, moral exemplars can work as a catalyst of the positive effects of contact. So, for instance, it was tested in the context of the Polish-Jewish relations. So, uh, Polish and Jewish students who were exposed to uh, narratives about moral poles who helped Jews during the Holocaust. Uh, uh, they uh, felt more accepted after the inter intervention. They had better attitudes towards each other and they felt more similar to each other. So after seeing that moral exemplars can work as a catalyst of positive, inter, uh, of positive effects of contact, we ask ourselves whether they could be also used to encourage intergroup contact in the settings where such contact is rare or non-existent. So based on the previous research, we generally know that information about in-group moral deeds may buffer a threat to one's social identity and as an effect, we can defensive reactions expressed through prejudice towards the victim group. So for instance, it was demonstrated that uh, reminders of in-group members who acted morally reduces the typical tendency to engage in temporal distancing from the negative in their group past. It has been also demonstrated that feeling of being morally accepted is related to willingness to reconcile. In the victim group, information about our group moral deeds may create an image of the perpetrator group as more trustworthy, which in turn may lead to more positive general impression of its members. So based on all of this, we formulated uh, three hypotheses. So first of all, uh, we hypothesize that information about moral exemplars will promote openness to contact between groups typically engaged in mutual contact avoidance practices. Regarding historical perpetrator group, uh, we hypothesize that being presented with stories of in-group members' moral behavior will reduce prejudice towards the historical victim group, and this in turn will increase openness to contact. Regarding the historical victim group, knowledge about our group moral examples will lead to more trust towards our group, 
resulting subsequently in more positive attitudes and in increasing contact openness. So in the first study, we tested the first two hypotheses. We conducted the study in the context of the Armenian genocide. Uh, our participants were 73 Turkish students, so representatives of the historical perpetrator group in this context. And uh, we had three experimental groups. Uh, and uh, we decided to add the unrelated outgroup moral exemplars group in order to see whether uh, the positive effects of moral exemplars wouldn't be explained by the general uh, exposure to positive information about intergroup behavior. And we use, uh, like as materials, we use narratives from intervention and shades of altruism during the Armenian genocide, which actually present like uh, interviews with uh, victims of the Armenian genocide. So we measured outgroup attitudes uh, using filling uh, thermometer. We measured openness to contact by using a version of the Bogarda scale. And here we can see an example of the stories we presented. So for instance, a Turk came to me and said, I shall find a good place for you, don't cry. He was a Turk from Malaysia. He was a very good man. Uh, and in general, we could see that uh, in comparison to two other groups, people who are ex exposed to in-group uh, in moral exemplars narratives, they were more open to contact. And marginally, they expressed also more positive outgroup attitude. And this was mediated by the increase in positive attitude. So this relationship between exposure to uh, in-group moral exemplars and contact acceptance was mediated by uh, increase in positive outgroup attitude. Okay, I'm running out of time, so I'll just summarize. Uh, in the study two, we tested the, the hypothesis one, three. Uh, the study was made in the context of Nazi occupation of Poland during the Second World War. We, our participants were 100 Polish university students, so the victim group in this context. We used uh, two conditions this time, and as a material, we presented a narrative uh, presenting a story of a German soldier during the Nazi occupation of Poland. Yeah, I'll just skip. <laughs> and again, we could uh, see a significant difference uh, in openness to contact. We could see a difference in the outgroup trust between the groups and outgroup attitudes. And this relationship between exposure to more exemplars and contact acceptance was mediated by outgroup trust, outgroup attitudes. Uh, and it led to increased contact, contact acceptance. And we had another study <laughs> in which we found similar results, so I will just skip it. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> okay. Yes, just this time, what was surprising, we actually didn't observe the mediation through outgroup trust we observed on an animation only through outgroup attitudes, as in the study one. So our first hypothesis was confirmed, the second was confirmed, and the third one was confirmed in study two, but not in study three. Okay, conclusions. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Yes, that's an outgroup example. Well, I'm not sure whether we should, but I, I'm like, our understanding here is like, uh, 
you know, what people think in a certain context. So I think people very often, people in Poland, uh, very often, especially people of the bit older generation, they, they basically think about, you know, current Germany as extension of Nazi Germany, and the prejudice level is still high. Is changing in the younger generation, and generally we can observe the decrease in prejudice. But considering it's still pretty high. Right.